Hey guys, we are back with the STPL once again. As I said, that wasn't the only series we'd be seeing today. This is going to be the second series. It's going to be Soul versus Ash. And this is going to be a very, very cool series. Now, I, the map order is slightly, slightly uh, different. There was one walkover in the series. I'm not going to tell you the result of that, we're going to wait until the fourth game to find out whether or not the walkover would have come into effect or not. Um, unfortunately, I do not have Scan versus Goody. Goody didn't show again. Uh, so hopefully, uh, the Ash Captain will be able to get on top of Goody and tell him to make sure he shows up for his games, because this is the second time uh, this has happened, I believe. So, need to be careful with that. Uh, oh, hey, Nassel. Okay, let's actually just head on over to the overlay, just so we can have a look at exactly who the teams are going to be. I know I just introduced them, but more for the benefit of the people watching the VODs, so I'll probably cut off the first little bit. Uh, but here we go, let's head in to the overlay, let's see what matchup's coming. We are going to have Soul Gaming versus Ash. Now, Ash haven't had the strongest showing yet. Soul Gaming have only played one game, they did have a buy, much like Netwars did in Week 2. So this is going to be their second match. And they are sending out a very, a very strong, a very, very strong uh, roster here. And let's have a look at the maps we are going to be seeing once again for week three. This is the final time you will see the maps in this order, most likely. Uh, maybe in week seven, I'm not too sure of how the rotation is going to work. Uh, I think if it rotates enough, we will get back to this, but I think it's not going to make it back in round one. But we're going to start with Gladi to four set one. Set two is going to be Polaris Rhapsody. Set 3, Grand Line SE, uh, Set 4, Neo Moonglaive, and Set 5, Judgment Day. Now, uh, it's going to be slightly different, so we're going to start with Set 1 on Polaris, Set 2, Grand Line, Set 3, Neo Moonglaive, Set 4, Gladiator, and then Judgment Day. I uh, should have probably changed that in the overlay, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. And... Okay, well, because I didn't fix that, this is actually wrong. <laughs> Let me just quickly bring my... I'm going to fix it, just because I want to make sure the production value is pretty good for this. Uh, let me just bring my face back up. I'll be literally like two seconds to swap that around. Uh, so I need to switch... Neo, wait, no I don't. I know exactly what I need to do. I'm being very, very silly right now. Uh, so Grand Line would have been the third map, so it's going to be the second one. This is the sort of uh, this is the sort of moment, guys, where it would be so much easier if I was like a big team of people. But just to remind you, I'm a one-man band doing this, and you know what? I enjoy it so much. I don't mind that I sometimes get things a little bit wrong. Like it's very hard to do everything yourself. So I like to think I'm doing a good job. But thank you very much for follow uh, for the follows and everything and all the support. Uh, if you can make sure you support all the players as well. But I've updated everything. So let's move back to the overlay to finish off what I was saying before. Uh, we're going to start off on Polaris Rhapsody. That's going to be a TBT between Ultra and Tet, the first TBT we've had in the STPL. And if I'm going to be honest, I'm actually right about it being a TBT this time. But I would like to point out that I have never imagined in my life that I would see a TBT in a foreign tournament. I know we've seen a lot of them recently, but when I first came back into the scene in 2015, well, I hadn't ever really gone anywhere, but I'd never really organized any tournaments or anything. Everyone was Zerg. Like, it was ZVZ all day long. Every single game, ZVZ, ZVZ. Every once in a while, you get a ZVP. And that was interesting, right? But I'm a Terran. I'm a Terran player, and I love TBT, right? And it was a long time before I started seeing TBTs again. Now, of course, like, you had people like Terran Dandy. They didn't really, they didn't really go into uh, that many... They didn't really go into that many tournaments when I was first back in 2015, so... And then, of course, Dandy doesn't play TBT, he plays PBT. It was only when we first started seeing people like Marwin back, people like Gargoyle, people like Cryoc, people like SPX. Like, when they started coming back, more and more TBT started happening, and I, uh, I got to see them. Uh, but here we go, let's have a look at the players. Wait, is there a thing I've missed? No, there isn't. Let's have a look at the players. As I said, we're going to be starting with the TBT. It's going to be Ultra versus Tear. Now, uh, Tear has actually won one, lost one. Ultra has only played one game so far, and he did lose that. Uh, so, unfortunately, 
Uh, this is going to be his redemption match. So if he can win this, he'll be feeling pretty good. He'll bring himself back to 1-1, 50% win rate. Of course, as I said before, these stats are going to go up as the tournament progresses. The best opponent's race I'm going to fix as well. I don't know why that's broken. Uh, it should be working. Uh, but you know what? Let's have a look at the map. And as I said, we're going to be starting on Polaris Rhapsody. There was a walkover game one. I'm not going to say the result of it until it matters. Uh, so we're going to go for a blank slate, 0-0 zero, zero to start with. And Polaris is going to be your first map here, two-player map. Double gas in the top right and bottom left. Going to be really, really interesting for TVT. There has been some really, really cool TVTs on this map. Two of the standout ones, if I remember correctly, were Fancy versus Lita, where I believe they both went four rates. And the other one was Fancy vs. Flash, that so was really, really good. Uh, well worth going back and watching those maps. Polaris was an MSL map originally, I think. And then it did make its way into the Pro League uh, in 2010. So, really cool map. Gonna be really cool to see how this plays out in TV, uh, TVT. And hopefully you are going to enjoy the journey as much as me. Let's quickly turn off the music here. And let's go into the game. Uh, let me quickly make sure I hide the playback menu, and let's get going, guys. Actually, just want to quickly check that I've not put it to... Yeah, it's it's on fastest, guys. Just wanted to make sure. And here we go, starting us off in the top left corner. You are going to have the player, Te, playing for Ash. Well, I believe they call themselves Ash Gaming. I'm not too sure. But, spawning in the bottom right, it is going to be the Red Terran. It's going to be playing for Soul Ultra. <laughs> time 16. I'm not time 16-ing. You know what? TBT is a great matchup, guys. You're not the people... <laughs> You're not the people who are going to be casting for an hour. Like, think of me. I love TBT, though. Like, you know what? If you don't like TBT, please feel free... To, uh, leave the stream running in the background. Alt tab for a little bit. I'll make sure someone gives you a poke and then you can come back for the next game. Um, but you know what? TVT is going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, uh, I'm going to be able to hype this up. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be an exciting TVT as well. Yes, I do understand there can be some very, very boring TVTs. But even the TVTs that look boring, there's a lot of micromanagement going on. A lot of strategic decision making as well. And it's a very, very deep matchup with so many different openings available for both players. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see exactly what openings they both go for. Of course, they could very well go for mirror openings. Looks like Ultra is going to build his barracks to the very edge of his base. Going to allow him to scout out with that a lot quicker. Uh, Ted building his a little bit back. And it looks like a load of people have actually tuned off because of CBT. Oh, man. But yeah, looks like we are going to have gas for both players, so we're not going to see any one Rex FE or anything like that. Uh, looks like we will have Ultra and Tez scouting exactly the same time as well. Uh, looks like Tez scouts out of his base a little bit quicker. Of course, that is affected by the way the units move uh, through like the mineral lines and everything like that. Uh, but pretty cool so far. I mean... I'm glad there's someone in the chat who doesn't mind TVT. I know Navani is a uh, Navani is a TVT player, a t or a Terran player, from what I understand. So uh, he probably likes TVT because of that. I know there are a lot of race pickers who avoid TVT, but I'm not one of them. And I'm glad someone else likes mirror matchups. Now there is one other person who really loves mirror matchups. I've not seen him pop up in the chat, but he's a Finnish Protoss player called Rota. He uh, or Rota. He does really, really hate, um, he really hates TVT, but he absolutely loves PvP. It's his favorite matchup in the entire game. And I'm fairly certain every time there's a PvP, I call him out because I'm like, he would really like this game. Uh, but he is going to be hosting a tournament himself tomorrow. Uh, that's going to be it. Okay, so this is going to be the confusing part. It's going to be 1300 GMT plus 2. Now, I believe that means it's going to be 1 o'clock finish time which is going to be 12 p.m. Um, norm or Central European Savings Time, which is what this this was, 9 p.m., obviously. Uh, it's going to be in the morning. Uh, he did it on Sunday last week, but it's going to be cool. It's an Alta's Weird Map League, and it's going to be the second day of playoffs, I believe. 
Uh, I made it to the first round but fell out there. Uh, but there's still a lot of really good players in the tournament. There's some really, really weird and old maps. Uh, he's got a lot of like the Blizzard <laughs> Blizzard Map of the Week maps from like 1998 and stuff like that in there. They're really crazy. The games are absolutely bonkers, so please do tune in for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. And of course, in the evening, we will have BSL with Zero. Once again, I'm going to go through all these events again at the end of the stream, but looks like we'll have the Scouting SUV going down for Tether. Both of them going for pretty mirror builds. We do actually have no units coming up for Rad uh, for Ultra yet. I called him Radley for some reason. Uh, but we do have a very, very quick tank coming up for Tether. Is his command center on the same speed? It's actually going to be ahead of, uh, of Ultra. So it looks like Ultra building an extra couple of Marines going to slow down his command center. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of events coming up over this weekend. There's a lot of events in general in Brood War, guys. And of course, during the week now, as well as the other STPL casts, it's going to be Tuesday, Thursday, and... No, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday next week. Uh, maybe Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm not really too sure. It uh, depends on when I'm going to be in work. Um, depends what, uh, what shift I'm on. Uh, but I'll figure that out and sort of post it all in the thread. Uh, but basically, there is on Monday going to be the Brood War Clan League Grand Finals for Season 44, I believe they're on now, which is insane. And uh, on Wednesday, it's going to be a very late night for Europe. Uh, I think it started at like 2 a.m. last week for me. Uh, but you're going to have the Pylon Show with Artosis and In Control. Now, if you didn't watch it last week, do give it a watch. Do give it a listen through the podcast. I know it was mostly StarCraft 2 content, but they did talk about Brood War a little bit. They explained why they don't talk about Brood War as much as they, they want to. Uh, but you know what? That's what me, Zero, Shantu, all the other content creators of Brood War are here for. We're here to create good content. Hopefully you enjoy it as much as I enjoy doing it for you. Um... Uh, but basically, we want to create content that's good enough for them to want to talk about. So let's try and build the Brood War scene. Yeah, I know we don't have IEM, we don't have Zotac, we don't have ESL, we don't have Dream Pack. You know what? Who needs them? We've got we've got the community. We need to make the community bigger. That's why you got to tune into all the events that are going on. Show your support for them on Twitter. Retweet that they're going to be on and stuff. Try and get as many viewers into the scene as possible. And you know what? That's going to make it better for everyone. And it's going to give our two and in control something to get excited about. And that's that's something that the Brood War scene is severely missing right now. And of course, Sunday is going to be ASL, so don't forget that as well. Now, going back into this game, we do actually have both players going for a lot of tank and vulture. So we're going to have a lot of mobile action early in the game. Uh, only one Vulture so far by Ultra, though. Uh, looks like he's focused way more on getting his tanks up. Second Factory was a little bit quicker there uh, for Tear. Both of them, interestingly, staying on two Factory for now. We don't have any Starports coming on. Both of them have added their Armory. This is to be against rates, of course. After the very beginning of the game, you don't really have too much you can do with your scouting. Um, but here we go, looks like Ultra are going to move out, going to see that there is an army coming for his natural, and this is going to be very hard to hold onto, this is a lot of Vultures, a lot of tanks, looks like the Vultures are moving forward, trying to lay the mines, can the mines go off, this could be pretty huge, but no, Ultra gets back in time, but if one of the players here can get a good position to siege in, oh my god, this is so bad for Ultra, he's moving into the mines, a huge mine drag! And that is going to be a lot of damage done. And it looks like another tank coming in from the top. They're going to even up the score just a little bit. And Ter is not going to be able to push the natural. But he is going to be able to take a position over this mineral only. And of course the all important double gas in the bottom right. Double gas base is going to be huge in TBT. Allows you to build up that tank goliath force. And dropships a lot quicker. And of course you can go for race on this map. Very very strong choice. We have four factories coming up for Tear. Not a massive fan of this factory placement. Would prefer to see the factory over here. Over here and maybe one hex to the right here. Just to allow him to build more machine shops. Uh, but it looks like he's going to be focusing on tank vulture for a while. Of course the two easily accessible bases are going to be mineral lonelies. Uh, so interestingly Tear has taken or has given up his position over this location here. Uh, gonna allow Ultra actually to move out over there, but Ultra looks like he wants to do a little bit of his own shenanigans here. Of course, the barracks chasing each other around for some reason, gonna give them both vision. 
Uh, now, there is going to be a lot of mines being placed down over here, but what is Ultra going to be doing here? Is he going to try and secure the top right-hand corner very, very quickly? Is he going to try and start mining on the uh, on Tez's side of the map? Of course, there is two ways this map can split. You can either see it split horizontally uh, due to the fact you do have this bridge and this high ground, and then, of course, you do have this high ground, uh, which makes it very hard to push down and up. Uh, same with this side, of course. Or you can see it split vertically, and this looks like it could be a vertical split here, as both of them look to be trying to cut each other off. But Ter is going to find himself completely out of position. This is a huge amount of damage, a really, really nice position here for Ultra, as he is going to be able to sit on top of the natural. Now, surprisingly, Ter's pulled away all of his SCVs. I don't think the tanks can actually hit these. He needs to start repairing his command center. And he needs to start mining his gas if he wants to uh, wants to find himself an advantage. But here we go. Vultures actually running past. All of the tanks have been pulled back. Uh, they're actually running into the tanks. They're not really doing too much. But nice Vulture. Going to be able to take down one of the tanks here. Uh, but this is a lot of damage going down. I think these tanks here, or well, this tank especially, got hit by a mine. And Ultra is in a commanding position uh, strategically and positionally in this game. Of course, uh, Ter does have mines all over the place, but he is going to be burning the minerals of, um, of Ter here. Oh, this could be dangerous. He's actually going to siege out just outside of sight range and range in general. Of course, the sight range is going to be harder for him to breach now with this barracks here. He's not going to have any anti-air. Uh, doesn't look like he's even adding any Goliaths to push this away. Uh, looks like he's going to go for his own counterattack with some Vultures, uh, but looks like Ultra is going to be prepared for this. Showing positionally he's a very, very sound player in TVT, and showing he's very, very strong here. Now, I know um, Ter plays a lot of Protoss on ladder. He's trolled me a lot on ladder with it, so I don't know how practiced he is in the TVT matchup, but both of them doing a lot of damage to each other, actually. Just trying to get any positional edge they can. Uh, interestingly, only two machine shops for our Teal Terran. We do have three for Ultra. He's going to add his third uh, command center. Look to build his third uh, gas at this base. So it does look like he wants to split it uh, vertically. But slowly but surely, this one rain is going to be able to take down everything in this top corner. There was no turrets built here, no Goliaths or anything. And here we go, the third base has actually been scouted by Ultra. He's going to build a lot of mines here, even a single tank. Doing what it can, strong block some of these vultures away. Uh, going to be able to get two of them, and the vulture's going to be able to clean up everything else. And unfortunately for Ter, he is most likely going to lose this command center. He's either going to have to cancel it, but here we go. Looks like he cancelled it immediately, but he's going to trap a lot of the units of Ultra down here. This is pretty huge. But no, he's not going for the trap for some reason. He's going to try and take the high ground. Uh, going to move back at the same time, of course. He does need to be careful. He does see... Wow, this one tank running away. Look how slowly tanks die to wraiths, guys. This is not a joke. Uh, looks like we actually have the, uh, the barracks going down here as well. But a lot of back and forth in this TBT so far. I've been very, very exciting. A nice mine going down, but doesn't get both the tanks. He could have got both the tanks there if the mines had split up. Uh, but unfortunately for Ultra, he's not going to get that little advantage. Strangely, Ultra taking a position across the bridges doesn't want to give up the position here. But this position's almost a moot point. It's better to actually just defend here and move up onto this high ground. But Ultra coming in with a lot of units, coming in from both angles on this siege line. How is the target fire by Ter? Looks like it's pretty good so far. Going to take out a lot of the tanks, but there we go. A huge tank volley. Going to take out the remaining tanks for Ter, and this could be a very, very dangerous position, of course. Ultra is going to have to try and push over this bridge. And this is why I see this position's a bit of a moot point. But here we go, Wraith coming in. Gonna die to the units. Not the best of siege lines here, but he is gonna make it impossible with one or two tanks to really push through this this bridge. Both of them gonna be trying to self position here. Vulture's getting on top of these back tanks. Gonna be a nice mine here. Nothing really he can do about this, but no, keeps it alive. Keeps that tank alive with nine health. So close. That could have gone either way, but those two or three tanks, four tanks actually, enough to completely negate this push over the bridge. And it looks like once again we have Ultra moving across to the right. We have a single Wraith still chasing around this tank. I think the one tank did go down this Wraith actually on four kills. Uh, but the third gas is going to be able to go up for Ultra. 
and looks like we're going to have Care being the one who's planning to push across the bridge. A lot of the units have been pulled away. I don't understand why he's taking this position. He should have tried to expand again. But Tear trying to break the contain that is in the middle of the map. But positionally, the middle of the map, not too important on this map, actually. Would have preferred to him to go to this top right, secure this base, secure this base. But unfortunately, it looks like he's trying to split the map vertically. Uh, he thinks that is going to be the way to do it. He's trying to secure this base over here, of course. He did have a command center over here, so that's going to be very important for him. Uh, looks like we have some vultures trying to take out the tanks. Nicely done with the tanks coming in from behind. And here we go. This is the first time we have Tear with the better position here. It's going to be high ground versus low ground. But Tear isn't sieging. He's unseaged. If he was sieged there, that could have been entirely different. But it looks like Ultra with the better position. Well, actually, it's still better positioning for Tear. But he does need to get into uh, repairing some of these tanks. Needs to take this mineral only as well. And Vulture's going to be moving across... The map now, the third base up for Ultra, of course. Looks like he should be heading towards his fourth base soon as well. Uh, gonna try and avoid as many supply blocks he can. But units just absolutely everywhere for, t uh, for Ultra. He just really does want to try and split the map the best he can. He's gonna try and split the map with like a... I would say this is like a 70-30 split. Block him off from the other gases. He, of course, does have units up here on the high ground with the mines. Gonna make it very, very difficult to break up. And he does have these units here and these mines here trying to block off the uh, the Terran from his extra gases. But it looks like we are going to have a vertical split here. We do have Tear trying to move through the middle again. But this is going to be high ground versus low ground action here. Once again, a nice mine on the... Oh, he needs to target the mines. He doesn't. A nice mine again. And Tear losing once more the majority of his army. And that's going to be too much. GG. Ultra is going to take a very action-packed TVT there.